Good evening and welcome to Sunset News on this Monday evening. As always, we bring you news, community stories, economics, weather and sports. I am Aina Kweo in the news tonight. Master Mark Hofmeister, one of the project managers, spoke at the launch of the new GIPF Biometric Enrollment and Verification System in Ventuk on Monday. The GIPF, in cooperation with a local ICT company, Virtual Technologies and a German tech firm, Demalog Identification Systems in Hamburg, launched their new Biometric Enrollment and Verification services. All the government institution pension fund members are now able to convert to the new system. The new security features include facial recognition in conjunction with a fingerprint technology. One major advantage is that the system will have a cell phone app attached to it which will make sending proof of live information much easier. Now members will no longer need to travel to designated GI PF offices to be able to collect their pension money. Stefan Nokal was there. For scheduling for the launch of the hardware to the regional offices and uh, we deployed the hardware, we made uh, the acceptance of the software and we also had a user training uh, all the, office, uh, the, uh, the officers from the regional offices came to Windhoek and we train them very well and we have also installed now a WhatsApp group where we can communicate with each other in the beginning of the project. I think this is normal. And yeah, in the phase one, we want to concentrate now for the enrollment. This is now the biggest challenge we have to do for all Indians. And um, we also want to hand over this very nice member ID card, the new member ID card to a GIP at also uh, including a chip with security features and your biometrics is stored on this chip. So this is new technology and I think we can be very proud. The Chamber of Mines of Namibia's Chief Executive Officer Vestan Malongo was happy to share details about the annual mining expo set for the 31st of August and the 1st of September at the Ventuk Showgrounds. This will be the first in-person expo since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic in Namibia. Mining has survived the pandemic well and come out of it stronger, he says, which will be evident at the expo where the growing industry will be showcased. Agueto Craig was there. We do not charge entry such as for free of charge. It's in order to achieve that objective because all we want to do is basically just to show the industry uh, to our stakeholders and the stakeholders is the public out there. As we all know, minerals belong uh, to the citizens and therefore we owe it to the citizens to explain what we do how can they participate and uh, what are the challenges that they see uh, with us and how can we uh, assist us. Number one. Secondly, uh, it's a very uh, good uh, platform for Namibians and business entities uh, to identify business opportunities in the upstream value chains uh, as local suppliers for mining inputs and, uh, and services. We believe this is really the low hanging fruit where um, um, and Namibians can participate uh, in the industry. Uh, obviously, this is a capital intensive uh, industry. The entry barrier is very high, uh, difficult, but we have been promoting at the chamber here that really, when it comes to local suppliers of goods and services, which is the upstream, uh, it, that's the low hanging fruit. And if I may give some statistic here, last year the industry spent um, uh, 15 point. Um, uh, uh, 15.297 billion, so essentially 15.3 billion uh, Namibian dollars on local procurement. Okay, that was last last year. An increase, um, uh, uh, a percentage of 47.25 percent of total industry uh, turnover of 32.374 billion in the same year. So we generated the turnover of 32 billion. The 2.374 billion, and out of that, 47 percent, 47.25 percent of that, which is 15 billion, 15.3 billion, 
was spent you know, in the local supply of goods and services. That's the money that went around the economy. And we believe uh, this is the, the low hanging fruit that um, entities entering into this area, uh, I think they can find a footing. Let's discuss this. According to shop steward Nelson Ndameshime, the workers of MVF Pemba Bay, a freezer vessel operating under CCOB, says that they haven't received salaries for the past two months, nor have they received answers on whether they are still employed or not. CCOB is a joint venture between Seaflower Whitefish Corporation Ltd. and Spanish finishing company Cob Ma. Leander Low was there. Since we come from the sea on the 28th of March 2022, the company did not give us any official notifications about working condition until today. We only experienced the salary of April came on the 16th of May and May salary came on the 8th of June instead, instead of 25 of every month is an agreed salary date and from there the salary our salary stopped completely until to date And the two late paid salaries were paid by force flee through the Office of Labor and the Union. We have signed an agreed bonus for the year 2022 to 2021 and is not yet paid also. Deputy Minister of Urban and Rural Development, Natalia Kaisers, says the Sheikh Dwellers Federation is playing a crucial role in building houses all over Namibia. She made the comments during a handover of houses in Ochinene in the Omaheke region this past weekend. She said that the Sheikh Dwellers Federation has been one of the most active community-based partners in implementing this very critical development program in the country. The Federation constructed houses for the following urban centers, including 171 houses in Khobabes, 106 in Aminos, 25 in Leonardville, 7 houses in Vedflay, and 2 houses in Epukiro. Namibia was undergoing a rapid urbanization requiring the need for organizations such as the Sheikh Dwellers Federation to continue in its role of housing development. Houses said that the nation is undergoing a rapid urbanization and the demand of urban housing is increasing, especially among low income groups. To successfully address the escalating demand, we need to encourage efforts such as those displayed by the Sheikh Dwellers Federation, along with partners involving Ochinene Village Council and government, as well as the private sector. She urged members of the Federation to continue repaying money borrowed saying that it was the only way to sustain it now in economic news tonight we talked to the acting chair of the Karas region council of the youth entrepreneurial mentoring conference after the break sport rap is a daily show focusing on all sport news and current affairs If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact sportrap at synergy.com.ma.
in community talk tonight Vival Marie Yanche, the Karas Region Acting Chair, shares her thought and experience about this year's Youth Entrepreneurial Mentoring Conference that was hosted in Luderitz last weekend. Monique Adams was there. So really my expectations from the mentorship conference is really that how to start businesses, where can one apply, which sectors really um, relates to each individual. So different sectors to be broken down so that different people can see exactly where to put themselves, where to place themselves. Really something that I, um, I didn't know that there's so many opportunities for people who are not as qualified or who don't have a lot of qualifications. So you don't need a lot of qualifications to be successful. You just need to be driven. You need to be persistent, consistent. You need to be able to, to have the proper, surround yourself with the proper people. They said that um, this is a mentorship program. So they really emphasize the importance of having a mentor. Someone who is grooming you. Because you might have the potential, but you, you need the guidance as well. After this, all I would love to, to say, all that I would like to say is, is that the youth should not take the knowledge that they've learned here for granted. They should really grasp everything and plow it back into the community as well as using it for their personal benefits, building their businesses, building their own enterprises, creating jobs and being part of the growth of the Republic of Namibia. Really uh, um, also the only thing that, 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 that I think could be done better is time management because there was some presenters that you really want to know more about but because time uh, um, time basically caught up with us people had to shorten their presentation so we didn't have enough time to fully grasp it's so much information that you have to take in all at once so maybe next time if something like this can be done in a longer period of time so that the presenters can have more uh, more time to fully bring through what they want to bring through and so that we can have if, uh, um, effective question and questions in discussions so that people can really ask the questions that they want to ask. In our story of the day, we look at the Recon Africa case where judgment was delivered on Friday. Tourismus Namibia is a weekly tourism show that brings you the latest news in the tourism industry and topics related to that. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact tourismus at synergy.com.na for news and advertising related queries. Tourismus, bring the world to Namibia. In our story of the day tonight, locals in the Kavango East region have made a little video in which they allegedly unlawful mining of sand not far from the Kaute is heavily criticized as it would seem as though nobody was consulted expect for, except rather for the headman. Frank Stefan and Yolanda Nell reports. Locals in the Kavangu East region sent in TV this video they made in which the allegedly unlawful mining of sand is heavily criticized as it would seem as though nobody was consulted except for the headman. Some of the people attribute this apparently brazen act to the fact that Recon Africa feels emboldened by the court ruling that rejected an application of local conservancies which had aimed at putting a stop to the ongoing gas and oil exploration in that area. 
The case had failed on a technical point rather than the substance. In the meantime, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police has begun investigating complaints by two Canadian nationals who suspect Recon Africa of possible corruption and security fraud. SNC Incorporated secured a landmark judgment for Recon Africa to continue with oil and gas exploration activities in the country. Recon Africa will therefore continue with the exploration activities as per the agreed work program with the Ministry of Mines and Energy. Recon Africa, through its Namibian subsidiary Renaissance Energy Namibia and NAMCOR, the joint holders of Petroleum Exploration Licenses No. 73, were cited as respondents by third parties in a matter lodged in the High Court of Namibia. The applicants were seeking an order from the court for an interim interdict to restrain OREN from continuing any oil and gas exploration activities, which has been authorised by the Environmental Clearance Certificate Amendment issued by the Environmental Commissioner. On the 29th of July, Justice Thomas Masiku delivered the judgment. He upheld the preliminary points in that the applicants failed to meet the requirements for the matter to be heard on an urgent basis and that the court had no jurisdiction to grant the relief sought by the applicants. The court therefore dismissed the applicants' case, ordered the applicants to pay the legal cost for Recon Africa and other respondents, removed the matter from the court roll and considered it finalised. Recon Africa will therefore continue with the oil and gas exploration activities for PEL 73 as per a great work program with the Ministry of Mines. In economic news tonight, after the break we look at the spectrum bidding of the Communications Regulatory Authority of Namibia. We Talk brings you community news that lies at the heart of Vindic residents. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact wetalk at synergy.com.na. You live, we talk. Thank you very much for watching Sunset News tonight. Now, in economic news, the Communications Regulatory Authority of Namibia published a request to bid documents for the Spectrum auction for a number of bands. Yolanda Nell reports. The Communications Regulatory Authority of Namibia, CRAN, published a request to bid documents for the Spectrum auction for a number of bands. Interested parties can submit their written comments before Monday the 15th of August. Lot A comprises 4 5 MHz in the 801 to 821 MHz band, paired with 4 5 MHz in the 842 to 862 MHz band. The reserve price stands at 25 million Namibian dollars, and the Spectrum license will be valid for a 10 year period from the date of publication in the Government Gazette. According to CRAN, licensees may use the spectrum for the implementation of both 4G and 5G going forward on a dynamic spectrum sharing basis. However, no 5G rollout or type approval of 5G network equipment is allowed until such time that CRAN receives authorization for deployment of 5G networks. Furthermore, CRAN said it aims to implement new technologies to promote innovation while ensuring access to broadband networks, specifically to unserved and underserved areas at prescribed broadband speeds and quality of service minimum parameters. Now let's have a look at our economic indicators. The Namibian dollar trades at 16 Namibian dollars 44 cents to the US and at 16 Namibian dollars 88 cents to the euro. It trades at 20 Namibian dollars 17 cents to the pound and 2 Namibian dollars 43 cents buys you one Chinese one. Gold increased with 0.11% while Brent crude oil is down with 1.89% trading at 93 US dollars and 19 cents per barrel.
The Talent Tech Focus will be published across our three daily publications, Republikein, Namibian Sun, and Algemeine Zeitung, offering nationwide distribution of A3 tabloid copies and additional coverage through a high-gloss tabloid-style magazine. The Talent Tech Focus will showcase the front runners in the telecommunication and technology fields, offering innovation to the local market and aiming to showcase both established and emerging players in the areas of tech, software and digital product and service provision. Thank you very much for joining us on Sunset News. We bring you international news. Member states of the European Union on Monday officially implemented an agreement to voluntarily reduce natural gas demand by 15% this winter and ensure ample energy supply in the region, Reuters reports. Reuters reports that according to the agreement, which was reached on the 26th of July, member states will reduce their gas demand by 15% compared to their average consumption in the past five years between the 1st of August this year and the 31st of March next year, with measures of their own choice. The reduction in gas demand is to save cost ahead of winter and to prepare for the possible disruptions of Russian gas supplies, according to the Council of the EU. In order to reduce the consumption of gas, many European countries have recently announced to reopen coal-fired power plants or take measures to support coal-fired power generation. Christian Lindner, Germany's Federal Minister of Finance, said on Sunday to halt electricity production using gas and called on the country's Vice-Chancellor to sign the relevant decree promptly. In addition, Lindner again called for German nuclear plants to remain in service until 2024, saying they were safe and climate-friendly. Three nuclear plants went offline in Germany last year and three more are due to be decommissioned at the end of December. After the break, we return with the sports news. The Regional Review brings you news, views and interviews from NMH correspondents from across the country. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact regional at synergy.com.na. In sports news tonight, Namibia's Helalia Johannes says the future now depends on the reaction of her body after scooping a bronze medal in women's marathon at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, England. The 2022 Commonwealth Game bronze medalist Helalia Johannes will decide on her future after consulting with her coach Robert Kahuena. Johannes won Namibia's first medal of games after finishing third Great Britain. Britain's Jessica Stenson won, uh, took the gold medal, while Kenya's Margaret Maruiki took the silver medal in the intense race. Now, after the break, we bring you highlights. Namibia's hospitality is as vibrant as its people. Join the Watts Cooking team as they travel the country cooking, chatting, and celebrating local personalities and the joy of food. If you think you have a standout offering, whether it's a restaurant, bar, pop-up event, or bry stand, get in touch with the Watts Cooking team at cooking at synergy.com.na and we will be there to show the world what's cooking. Programs air every Friday at 4 p.m. on all the NMH Facebook platforms, as well as on NTV, DSTV Channel 285, and GoTV Channel 94 at 9 p.m.
Thank you very much for joining us this evening. The Communications Regulatory Authority of Namibia published a request to bid documents for the Spectrum auction for a number of bands. Interested parties can submit their written comments before Monday the 15th of August. Lot a compromise for the M. M sorry, lot a compromise where the reserve price stands at 25 million and the spectrum license will be valid for a 10 years, for 10 years from the date of publication in the government gazette. Now that is all that we have for you tonight here on Sunset News. Please don't end your day without us. Good night.